the Dreamscaper demo. This is an interesting one for me to look at because the two major parts of its pitch are things I don't find particularly enticing. It's a Binding of Isaac styled action RPG about depression. Or rather dealing with a depressed game developer's nightmares. And when you break that down, I like the Binding of Isaac. Just not as much as everyone else seemed to. And as for games about mental health, I don't see how anyone could be against them. It's an important subject matter, of course, but I've played enough of them that, while beautiful in their handling of that subject matter, were not particularly fun video games, which, at the end of the day, is what I'm after. And I've become a little jaded about the whole thing. So I hope you understand what it means when I say this. This I like. So why is that? Well, when it comes to the Binding of Isaac comparison, the biggest difference is how the combat is handled. The Binding of Isaac, as you may know, was a top-down shooter of sorts, while Dreamscaper is a more melee-focused brawler. You do have ranged attacks, but ammo is a concern, and also, yes, that was the original Binding of Isaac. I don't have Rebirth. That's, that's not what this video is about. Leave me alone! Now, I wouldn't say that I prefer brawlers to top-down shooters necessarily, but here I think it works really well, for a few reasons. First off, each weapon having a unique attack string, limited though they are, really helps enhance the feeling of variety. Bashing in a shadow creature's face with boxing gloves feels radically different to slashing them with a sword, or pummeling them with yo-yos, or any of the other very real weapons, and that makes the prospect of running through the same content over and over again even in this short demo, much more enticing to me. Each run felt different from just the combat flow alone. And honestly, that's kind of all it took for me. Everything else was just gravy. Time slowing mechanics? Cool! I forgot about them most of the time. Elemental based cooldown abilities? Always a plus but I tended to just want to deal with things myself. But the point being, even though the basic combat was enough to get me on board, there are plenty of other things other than that, and the art style, obviously, that differentiate Dreamscaper from the standard setting Isaac. There's also these puzzle rooms. That are not Pipe Dream, it's completely diff- it's- it's not- it's, it's totally- it, it seriously is. It is, and that confused me. But in all seriousness, there are a lot of things that have either been added or improved. You can fast travel to previously explored squares, which is a great time saver. You can be reactive in your movement with the addition of a dodge roll, and there's a progression system in the form of unlocking different gear for future runs with resources collected throughout your current one. And they even let you try it out right away. A lot of games just sort of add it to the item pool and you just have to hope to get lucky. But no, they just, they just give it to you, so that's a nice little bonus. Truly, I just think the gameplay is great. The only criticism that I kind of have is that I wish the combat was a tiny bit deeper. The three attack combo strings and one alternate attack that each weapon has are fun, but might lack the complexity that really dedicated players almost need late into the game. But then again, this is an early demo, so I don't exactly think that late game options were much of a thought at this point, so I think I might just be complaining for the sake of it. And now since I've mentioned it, I should probably talk about the mental health themes. And whether this is a good or bad thing is up to you, but there's not a whole lot of it put on display. The biggest reference, let's call it, is the boss at the end's name being Isolation, one of the major symptoms of depression. But other than that, it's pretty subtle. I mean, there's some clear signs that this character is a little depressed, or at least not at a great point in their life, but it never beats you over the head with it, which is the thing that I can't stand. When you spend more time trying to make a point than building an experience, then you've lost me. But luckily, that doesn't seem to be the way they're going with this. Still not exactly a selling point for me, but I am interested. And with that, we get to what is now my favorite part, the ratings. Why radar charts are not used for everything, I'll never understand. But regardless, this Dreamscaper demo gets an overall B+. This is a great demo. Some things of note are first, this doesn't need to be here. I'm not going to try to tell the devs what they think of their own game, but I gave controls an A because both controller and keyboard and mouse were excellent. And honestly, I think I enjoyed mouse and keyboard more. My only criticism is, I would have liked to have changed some of the key bindings, but when is that not the case? 
Other than that, the polish gets an A because of what a complete experience this feels like, though I did have some performance drops, so it's not actually perfect, but really good. And lastly, I gave premise a B in spite of my complete lack of interest in both major parts of its premise, because I like the idea of a roguelike's inherent randomness coming from a dream. And also finger guns. The finger guns helped a lot. I like the premise of finger guns. Pew! And with that, this critique comes to a close. So if any of this caught your interest, and you perhaps want to help the developers out, they have a Kickstarter going on right now, link in the description. And even if you're not, you should totally check out the demo on its own. It's completely worth it, also in the description. Have a good one.